Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the old captain, the old captain, coming to you live from Crooked Creek once again with this week's Crooked Creek Hymn of the Week. Now, um, years ago, when I was doing the Hymn of the Week, I would simply introduce the uh, writer of the song and the one who wrote the music and just sing the song. But um, this time, I've chosen to do a little Bible study as well, and I think that's um, that's important. If um, if I seem to be moving around a little bit, I'm sorry. I thought it was wedged in here pretty good, but we'll deal with that as we as we get to it. Um, anyway, our scripture lesson, as you know, we're in the book of Genesis, and our scripture lesson today is in Genesis 24. Now here's the setting in Genesis 23, Sarah, Abraham's wife, has died. Old, 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 Abraham is old, old, old. And because they were so old when they had Isaac, it shows you how much time has passed because in the um, text of this lesson and the context, Isaac's already late 30s, maybe even early, older than that, but at any rate, it's time to find Isaac a wife. A wife. It's time to find him one. Now, those of us who grew up in America don't know a whole lot about um, weddings and marriages that are set by the parents. But this was uh, this wasn't uncommon in biblical days. It's really not uncommon in a lot of places in our world today, from what I understand. Most of us are um, used to some chick catching our eye, and then we take a spin or two around Dairy Queen, and before long, um, we realize that we enjoy being with that person, and before we know it, um, somehow she has gotten us to the altar, and we've married her, and we just try to make the most of it. and um, But that's not the way it was in biblical times. Now, um, many of us are blessed. Uh, Ramona and I uh, celebrated our 50th anniversary this past summer. My brother Dan and his wife will celebrate 60, 60 years sometime here in, um, in next month in, in April. And what's crazy about that is they were 16 and 17 when they married. So um, I think in my case and Danny's case, our, our marriages have lasted in spite of us. But in these days, um, your mate was chosen. Now Abraham, known as the man of faith, known as the father of all these gazillions, um, he had several servants, and, and so he, he chose to send this one particular servant back home, send him back to Mesopotamia, Ur, wherever Abraham originated, because he wanted his son's wife to be set apart from those Canaanites, from the pagans. He wanted her to be cut from the same cloth. The Bible teaches us about being unequally yoked. If you're a believer and you're married to an unbeliever, um, you're going to have problems because that, that just that just doesn't work. I mean, that just somebody will want to go to church, other than doesn't want to, and on and on and on. It's so much easier when you marry within your, within your faith. And so Abraham didn't want the blemish of Isaac starting out with a, a, a foreign pagan woman. And so he sends his servant back home to fetch um, Isaac a wife. Now, this was not a small task because they were like 400 miles or more from that homeland. Now, I don't know how far you've ridden a camel but um, 400 miles seems to be a long ways to me. 400 miles is a long way for me to drive. I don't like to drive more than, if I go more than 80 or 90 miles, I feel like I've driven to California. So 
So 400 miles on a camel is no small task. But anyway, this, um, this servant, and many believe it's Eleazar, but he's not mentioned in, in this text, but he was a high-ranking servant, well-trusted, one that was close to Abraham, one that had um, observed Abraham's life, and he had seen the importance of Abraham's relationship with God. And I'm not so sure that he didn't have a relationship with God as well because later on, prayer plays a big part in this process. And really, the theme this morning, it, in my opinion, is prayer. Um, folks, you can't survive without praying for God's direction. I don't care if you're the godliest couple in the world. You're only as strong as those two people's relationship with God. We need to pray. We need to pray about decisions. We need to pray thanking God for our many blessings. We need to pray prayers of petition for our um, friends and people that we know are in need of prayer. But um, in this case, Abraham, uh, he tells us, guys, I want you to go back to my homeland. I want you to find Isaac a wife. And he says, don't take Isaac because I don't want him going back and staying. This is our land now, this Canaan. This is the land that God has given us. We are staking a, a stake in the ground, putting a flag up because this will be Israel. This will be our land in time. And so um, wasn't no going back. Sarah had been buried in a particular place, and later on, Abraham would be buried there, Isaac would be buried there, Jacob would be buried there, Leah would be buried there. So they were making a stand in this new land, even though at this point it wasn't theirs, but it would be in years to come. Well, back to the story. Um, Isaac, I mean, Abraham sends his guy to get a wife for Isaac. And there's a lot of prayer involved. There's a lot of supplication involved. And finally, when he finally gets there, he takes like 10 camels. And I'm sure an entourage of people, it wasn't just him and a camel going 400 miles. There's a lot of people involved and a lot of animals involved. But he gets to this uh, area and it's uh, a well. And it's a place where women brought their big containers, urns and Tupperware and stuff and, and drew water in the middle of the day to feed, I mean, to, for, to take back home and to water, water the animals as well. Um, in those days, the women did the bulk of the hard work and the men did, they did cool stuff. Like they sat at the city gate and made decisions and and leaned back on their elbows and ate fruit and stuff. And the women did the bulk of the work. Well, when he gets to the well, um, the servant prays and he prays for a sign. And he says, Lord, when I get there and I see all these women coming to water their animals and to get water, he said, how about if we do this? I say to one of these girls, could you give me a sip of water? Could you give me a drink? And, I, and then for her to show me she's the one you have chosen, she is going to reply, I will give you a drink and I will also water your camels. So that, that's the plan and God agrees to it. And so um, we see in, in Genesis 24, Three, I'm sorry, 2410, then the servant took 10 of his master's camels and departed for all his master's goods were in his hand. He arose to, and went to Mesopotamia to the city of Nahor. He made his camels kneel down outside the city by a well of water at evening time, the time when women grow out to draw water then he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day. Show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold,
Behold, here I stand by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Now let it be that the young woman whom I say, please let me, please let me drink, that she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant, Isaac. So prayer has gone before. He's, he's gone, traveled all those miles. He's at the scene. And then he looks and he sees this girl who we later know is Rebecca. And Rebecca's, she's cute. I mean, she's a knockout. And so um, the servant goes to her and he says, ma'am, could I have a drink of water? And she says, I will give you a drink of water. Not only that, I will water your camels. Bing, bing. That's all it took. Well, think about what she has said. I will water your camels, at least 10 camels. And my understanding, camels can go a long way without water, but when they have to recharge, they gotta drink a lot of water. So you figure 20 gallons per camel times 10 camels, that's 200 gallons of water this girl had to draw up to water the camels. So everything's fallen into place. They go back to her, her family, and um, you'll see that um, gifts were exchanged. She, um, they even ask her, and I wonder how common this was, they even ask her, are you willing to go back? And she says, I'm willing. So it shows that God's hand was in that, in that whole thing, but I believe, that it all came about because of Abraham's faithfulness, and I think it came about due to the willingness of Abraham to pray, to Isaac to pray, because we find when, when they return, Isaac is out in the field making supplication. He's praying for this bride to come. So prayer played a big part in this whole thing. So. Um, I thought with, with that thought in mind that we would sing a hymn about prayer. And the one I've chosen today is uh, number 455, if you've got your hymnal. And um, the words, um, the hymn is called I Must Tell Jesus. The words and the music were, were written by Elisha A. Hoffman, who lived from 839 to 19. 29, lived 90 years, that's a long time for that time period. But um, the writer in the, of this hymn says, I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Folks, before we make decisions, particularly life-changing decisions, or really even small decisions, we need to take it to God in prayer. We need to bathe it with prayer and to seek His direction. So we're going to sing four verses, <clears throat> I Must Tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make of my troubles quickly an end. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. 
I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Tempted and tried, I need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, He all my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Last verse. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus and he will help me over the world the victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. So folks, what kind of burdens are you trying to bear? What kind of trouble? What kind of decisions? What kind of, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of are you going through? I cannot bear these burdens alone. You cannot bear these burdens alone. But Jesus can help us. Jesus alone. I must tell him. I must pray. Just like the, um, servant prayed for direction he prayed for safety he prayed that god would point out the correct person for isaac isaac was praying in the background abraham was praying in the background rebecca was receptive to god's will and receptive to the prayers of these people and because of that it was honored our pastor tim oliver says that god honors those who honor him are you honoring him this week? Are you honoring him today? I hope and pray that you are. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's Crooked Creek Hymn of the Week. If you don't mind, um, share it with somebody else. And thank you for taking the time to watch it. We will hope and pray, good Lord willing, to see you again next time. Take care and God bless.